As Christians, we know that because of Jesus' death upon the cross and his resurrection from the dead, we have peace with God the Father, that we have the forgiveness of sins, that we have the promise of everlasting life. And this is something that God gives to us solely by his grace and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. We know that there is nothing we can do that would make God love us any more than he already does. There's nothing that we can do that would get us more saved than we already are. This is all true, and someone could easily get the idea that since you aren't saved by what you do, then it doesn't really matter what you do. And if it doesn't matter what you do, you might as well just do whatever you want to do. And if you do whatever you want to do, you're usually catering to the sinful flesh. Well, Peter reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 1 that we cannot have faith in Jesus Christ and be indifferent to sin or be indifferent to the needs of our neighbor. He says, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. And then he goes on to say, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. In this text, Peter reminds us that living in sinful ways is an empty way of life, a futile way of life, and that as Christians, we are to love one another earnestly. Now, let's be honest. That's easier said than done, because there are a lot of unlovable people in this world. In fact, I need more fingers on my hand in order to count all the unlovable people in my life, and that's not even getting past the first hour of the day. So can I just do what I want to do? Can I just do what, what makes me happy? Why do I have to look out for other people? That just makes my life a lot more difficult. Wouldn't it be easier if everyone just took care of themselves? Some people might say that life is really just all about pursuing happiness for yourself. So can't I just do what makes me happy? Well, the problem is, is that usually those things that make me happy are things that have nothing to do with God and everything to do with the sinful pleasures of this life. And there's a problem with those pleasures in this life. Now, let's, again, let's be honest. Sometimes we really enjoy sinning. And sometimes that sin can give us some pleasure. But what we don't always think about is that that pleasure is not lasting. And that when we indulge in these sinful pleasures, uh, they have to be repeated over and over and over again. And they have a way of becoming addictive and enslaving. That if we don't look to Christ for our happiness and our fulfillment, then we realize that Peter is correct. That it is a life of utility. A life without Christ is basically just a life of sin. And a life of sin, which exists outside of Christ's forgiveness and the sanctification of the Holy Spirit, revolves around the needs and the wants of the sinner. And this is the kind of life that Jesus has saved you from. So why would you want to continue walking in it? Even though we have God's forgiveness, we must never think that he doesn't care about how we live our lives. He gives your life meaning and purpose in Christ. In fact, he even gives you hope beyond this life, a new life yet to come when you will be raised from the dead, when your body that you have right now will be glorified in. That's why Peter says that we are exiles in this life, because we are exiles in this world of sin. It's not our permanent home. As exiles, we're only here for a while. Our everlasting home is in the world to come, when Jesus returns to raise us up from the dead. Peter tells us, as he quotes Isaiah the prophet, all flesh is like grass and its glory, like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of the Lord remains forever. So during this time of your exile on this earth, until Christ comes again, or until you go to be with him, let us conduct ourselves with fear as the good news of Christ's salvation is preached to you and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are delivered to you through his church.